KLR versus DR650. So I haven't ridden it off-road. So not a completely objective comparison. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> At night. Don't wreck. No, he made it. Even though that was cool. Um, I can't really make an objective comparison between the DR650 and the KLR, so... Um, because I've only ridden it for about 20 minutes, and it's all been on the road. The KLR is a lot slower, it's a lot bigger, and you can fit a lot more stuff on it. It's also a lot less expensive, because the year goes back. There's a lot bigger following for the KLR, from what I understand. Um, and there's a lot more parts, from what I understand for the KLR at a lot better prices because uh, the market's larger, you know, if there's more bikes out there there's going to be uh, more people making parts for the bike and since Kawasaki basically hasn't changed anything about the KLR for, you know, well, like 20 years I figure uh, that's probably the reason why but from until I think 2007, it was the same thing from like 1989 to 2007. It kind of follows the mantra of it. It's not broke, don't fix it. That's even with the doohickey issues and stuff like that, which according to a few people, you have to fix it. And according to a few others, it's fine. Don't mess with it. You know, one thing that I really wish the KLR 650 had, the DR does have, is just the... Oh, that's steep. I wish that it had the... the headlight swiveled with the handlebars. Because I want to turn. It's a little bit annoying to be turning into a blind corner and your headlight's shining into the bushes and you're like, oh, thanks. Like, for example, right here. You know, and the KLR's headlight is also terrible. But it gets the oh neutral gets the job done. Obviously, I mean that's I think that's probably the biggest draw of the KLR is I'm on the same trail as my brother. He's on a super awesome bike, and my bike is fine for my purposes but uh, costs a lot less, a lot less. Um, that's kind of what it's all about. It's like, how much bike do you need? Is it really worth it to get a super expensive bike? Ooh, that was a big dumper. I like the words that I make up on the fly. A dumper, mm, that's a dumper. That's a baby head. <laughs> Oh, another huge advantage that the KLR has. Now, I mean, obviously, anything on a motorcycle can change with aftermarket stuff, including the headlights. So pros and cons kind of go out the window unless you leave your bike stock, which this bike that I'm riding is pretty much stock, except for the pieces of crap that I slap onto it and call it a mod. But they work. That's the cool part, is that we're something where the KLR totally dominates. Pretty much any other, you know, more off-road oriented dual purpose motorcycle. I love that the KLR has a big fat gas tank. And a uh, range of 250 miles. That is a huge plus for me. I don't really have to worry about gas. I know I've got 250 miles on the road. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's a lot of trust you put in the tank, you know. Um, on the BDR, there's actually sections where, if they're difficult enough, um, the DR might run out of gas. So I'm going to bring along a little siphon. And, uh, oh, this is getting hairy. <laughs> I'm not even going to. I just think Michael Scott. 
anyway, bring it along a siphon so that uh, I can share gas if I need to. It's kind of cool because I won't need any like little additional gas cans or anything. 